program, we go in, right into the classroom, right into the Ben Capro school. school. And the program is a model that we're using, and his name is Gilbert J. Botvin. And there are three uh, sections that we, we touch on. Personal self-management, general social skills, and social resistance skills. So within those areas, there are eight programs that we go through. Uh, the first one is self-esteem, decision-making, smoking, advertising, dealing with stress, communication, social skills, and assertiveness. And our other program that we cover is the After School Yellow Bus Program. How this works is Heather and myself get on the bus at the school with the children and we take the ride home with the, with the students. We bring with us some material. We have these activity boards which will include either an Aboriginal activity or some hidden pictures. These activities keep the students busy while they're on the bus so it keeps them out of trouble. They are able to make friends at the same time as they're doing their activities. And we're also on the bus to help the driver with behavioral problems. And we're there to help against any sort of bullying that could take place on the bus. Currently, I believe we are the only people that are doing this within Edmonton, riding the school bus with a driver to ensure safety and fun. And it makes, it makes for a very rewarding experience for everybody. And what age group um, do you uh, this program for? Well, for the life skills, we're in classes grades three to six. So currently we're in six classrooms and we uh, take a half hour out of the, the teacher's time, which is actually within their health curriculum. The age group for the yellow bus is from kindergarten to grade nine. Uh, what, in your opinion, makes it an example of excellence in Indigenous education? Well, they're learning a lot of things about um, basically, well, the personal self-management, which is how, you know, goal setting, problem solving, um, decision making, um, social skills, they're learning how to communicate, um, how to make a friend, how to keep a friend. And the social resistance skills is a big part of it, that's uh, we, we teach uh, smoking, about smoking and the harmful, harmful effects, and also about alcohol and the harmful effects. And within our teachings, we just do a lot of fun activities within the half hour. So we do a lot of role playing, um, a lot of question and answer. And we do have some items that we bring in to do visual aids. For example, uh, when we're t talking about anger, we have made a, like a volcano. And that's how we kind of show how when you don't talk to anybody, your anger can build up and you explode like a volcano. So we use our visual uh, aids to, to help teach us. And how do you measure the success of this program? Well, at the beginning, there are actually three levels. So uh, beginning school year, September to December, there's level one. And then from January to March, level two. And mid-March to June, level three. And how the program works is level one and level two and level three, we teach the same topics over and over and over again. So they get for example, self-esteem three times in a row. So within that first time, second time, third time, it is built up and they're learning different things about self-esteem. And within all of that, the program is basically, they're tr we're trying to have the kids cognitively hear the information and listen to the information and kind of take that all in. And kind of level two, they're kind of shifting their behavior into, um, gee, you know that, you know, maybe I can help out a friend if a friend is being bullied. And then the third level, it's like at the end of the year, we're, we're hoping that they basically, that they have shifted. So they actually will intervene when a friend of theirs is being bullied, for example. So how we measure that is we do have a pre-test and a post-test. So in September, we, we have a pre, and then after the first level, we have a post, and another post, and another post. And so at the end of the school year, we have significant valid information that we have collected that they are changing, and they are behaviorally changing how they're thinking and what they're doing.
From your perspective, what is Indigenous education? I believe that Indigenous education is having some cultural aspect to the education that the students are learning. If that is a language, here in Edmonton, the language taught in school is Cree. At the school that we that we are a part of, and we're very happy to be, happy to be a part of Ben Kafrop School, they also teach regalia making. They teach how to dance, powwow dancing, jigging, fiddling, beating, all these different aspects, which if we don't teach these things to the younger generation, these things are going to be lost over time. So I'm very happy to be a part of that. What is your vision for Indigenous education over the next 10 years? Well, that's a tough one because I think it, it could go on and on. Basically, every, every day is a learning day and every year is a learning year. And uh, we've actually seen kids grow up. We've been in school for five years now. So we've been teaching this program there for five years and uh, the stories that have come out of what we've taught. Kids are coming up to us and saying, I, I you know, I didn't t uh, take that cigarette when it was offered to me. I helped a friend when the friend was being bullied. I made a good decision for myself today. I didn't steal that chocolate bar when I was peer pressure too. So as we go down the years, I think every year builds on the next year and the kids will be graduating from the school and being a, a part of society and, and having their own kids and, and teaching their own kids what they've learned, yes. So what information or materials, uh, resources, do you need to achieve that vision aside from funding? Well, I think we have passion. I think me and Tanya, we work together well, and I think the, the school uh, sees the, the passion that we have for the, the life skills program and the, the bus program, and uh, we're very welcome in the school to, to partake in other activities that they're having. We walk into the school, and the kids are walking down the hallway, and they wave to us. Yeah, they're always happy yeah. to see us. We get hugs yeah. every day. Yeah. And, and the other part is they tell us things that they haven't told anybody else. So we're not teachers, we're not a parent, we're, we're kind of somebody else that comes in the school and they basically, can, they tell us things and they, they're happy to see us and, and boy, they, they grow. <laughs> like we've seen little ones grow and, they're, and some of them kids are, are taller than me now. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's passion, I think the passion and, and what we give and I think everybody sees that. What I love to hear is, yay, we get life skills today. Are you on our bus? Awesome. So the kids are very happy to have us in their classrooms and on their bus. It's a lot of fun. The programs that we teach are great. They really are. They're so good that I actually put my kids in that school just to be able to access these programs and to be able to, to learn these different things.